good morning friends today we will be discussing about uh, types of uh, respiratory failure so usually respiratory failure is classified into type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 so type 1 is broadly called as a uh, hypoxemic respiratory failure with uh, pao2 less than 60 mm hg type 2 is uh, hypoxemia and the main important thing is uh, hypercapnia so hypercapnia that is uh, paco2 more than uh, 50 mm hg and type 3 is perioperative respiratory failure so this is uh, occurring due to general anesthesia which results in uh, atelectasis of lung and also decreased frc type 4 is uh, shock resulting hypoperfusion of respiratory muscles so broadly classified as type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 for us the important thing is the type 1 respiratory failure and type 2 respiratory failure so what happens in type 1 respiratory failure and what happens in type 2 respiratory failure what are the causes and what are the abg parameters let us discuss so now considering this is alveoli and let this be the artery so whatever uh, you measure in uh, alveoli is uh, PaO2 that is uh, alveolar oxygen and here it is uh, arterial oxygen suppose the oxygen is uh, entering the alveoli it has to diffuse through the alveolar capillary membrane into the artery so usually this gradient the difference between alveolar and arterial gradient is normally 10 to 15 mm hg type 1 respiratory failure is characterized by diffusion defect so there is some problem uh, in diffusion so so that uh, whatever enters into the alveoli is not being again transmitted into the artery so what happens here is uh, usually pao2 will be normal but as there is a defect here the amount of oxygen entering into the artery decreases so definitely the gradient that is the difference will increase so this is normal and this instead of being normal it decreases so the gradient here it can be usually 100 so here it has to be 90 uh, in the artery but it is only 60 so definitely the gradient is increasing and the most important thing is the pH can be normal and very very important thing is what happens to the carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide either it will be normal or it can be decreased the reason is uh, as there is a hypoxemia that is a decreased PaO2 it stimulates the respiratory center that causes uh, increased ventilation so whatever the ventilation you increase this diffusion defect is not going to be changed so the PaO2 decrease that is hypoxemia persists further increasing the ventilation so what happens is though the PaO2 is not getting increased due to ventilation there will be CO2 wash out so definitely this can result in decreased CO2 that is the hypocapnia sometimes it can be normal the causes here are parenchymal causes such as fibrosis, interstitial lung diseases, pneumonias, sarcoidosis, vascular causes uh, like pulmonary thromboembolism and uh, some pulmonary edemas. So this is uh, type 1. Now let us see type 2. So what happens in type 2? the same thing this is the alveoli and let this be the artery now what happens here is it is characterized by type 2 we call it as a pump failure there it is a diffusion defect pump failure or alveolar hypoventilation see the amount of oxygen reaching the alveoli itself is low so definitely 
when uh, the oxygen in the alveoli itself is low definitely the oxygen within the artery also will be low but as there is uh, no diffusion defect the gradient can be normal so now pao2 is decreased pao2 is also decreased but the gradient will be can be maintained or will be normal now what happens to ph and what happens to psu2 as i told you that it is a ventilatory defect that is a pump defect so whenever the ventilation is involved it only uh, it not only causes decreased o2 it not only causes uh, decreased entry of o2 but also it decreases the exit of co2 so when there is decreased exit of co2 that is pa co2 increases because accumulation of co2 whenever carbon dioxide increases in the body there will be acidosis that is ph decreases the causes here are central causes causing hyperventilation such as primary alveolar hypoventilation syndromes obesity hypoventilation syndrome and obstructive causes such as foreign body chronic obstructive pulmonary disease this is very very important and peripheral causes such as diaphragmatic disorders neuromuscular disorders uh, such as hyposcoliosis guillain barre syndrome myasthenia gravis and poliomyelitis so kyphoscoliosis guillain barre syndrome myasthenia gravis and poliomyelitis what you need to remember is uh, this abg parameters here the pao2 is normal in artery decreases the gradient increases ph normal and psu2 normal this is type 1 what happens here uh, decreased pao2 decreased both parameters but the gradient remains normal pH decrease, PSE would increase. This is type 2. So, thank you friends.